Where have you guys been? Man, I've been missing you guys. I guess it's my fault because I haven't been uploading, but I've been busy, a lot going on. Had some issues with the shop, had to back out of the shop that I actually posted uh, here on the channel. Got some other things in the works though. Gonna definitely try to find another space, so still coming. That, uh, that building I showed on the channel had some leaks in the roof, actually had some pretty bad leaks and the owner just wasn't wasn't really willing to work with me so can't have uh, can't have rain coming in all my vehicles and tools and all that sort of thing so like I said I'll find another one and uh, maybe it'll be better maybe bigger maybe it'll be cooler anyway back on the Bibster gonna try to get some chassis work done on this thing uh, first thing I had to do though clean up the shop Once the shop was clean, I started cutting away some of the excess material that's still left uh, from the underside of the Bibster cab, I guess is what you'd call this thing. When I cut the floor pan out, I kind of rough cut it because I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do and I didn't want to cut too much away. So since then, I've kind of figured out what it is I want to do and so I had to go in there and kind of trim out what was left and uh, just leave the rocker boxes on this uh, cab is it a cab it's not a truck on this body So once I had those rocker boxes nice and clean, I basically cut out a couple plates that were gonna go in there. I clecoed those plates to the actual rockers themselves. And this is what the entire tube chassis is gonna be attached to in the car. So basically the body's just gonna be for long for the ride in this thing. It's just gonna kinda be for looks on the outside. And with these plates in here and just clecoed for now, I can kinda weld in all the bars that I need to weld in. And then before, uh, well I can drop that whole thing out from underneath this car to final weld everything. So initially this is all going to be tacked, drop the entire cage structure out from underneath the body, get everything final welded, prepped, cleaned, if I want to paint it or powder coat it I can do that. Then it goes back up in the car and I'll either bolt it to the rockers or uh, may weld it in. So don't know, we won't know until we get there.
Once the rockers were in, then it was time for some tube work. On this particular build, I started up front with the firewall tube. I wanted that tube to kind of start it off, get the right angles and bend to it uh, to match the firewall on this thing. I'm gonna kind of use the factory Fox Body style firewall and on the sides it's kind of rounded a little bit uh, with like a V-shaped section flat panel in the middle. Uh, I'm not gonna use the factory stuff but I'm gonna kind of stick to that shape I think. Once that front bar was in, then I made the side bars that run down each side of the door. I posted a lot of pictures on Instagram and Snapchat while I was doing this and I had a lot of questions on how I determine how to build the chassis, where to start, where to put the bars. Uh, a lot of what I'm doing is, is what you'd find in uh, the drag racing world in the 25.5, 25.2s, 25.3s, I think the 25.1. Uh, all those are slightly different variations of kind of the same thing. There's just two different sizes and whatnot. As far as the tube size goes, I'm not sticking to those rules. I'm doing everything in inch and five eighths just to kind of make it look uh, symmetrical. But as far as the tube placement goes, I'm kind of doing that. Uh, it's a proven, it's proven for safety. You know that that style is is made for safety, and so I kind of want to do that in this car for nothing else, just for safety reasons. Uh, for it's they're really proven structurally too, so. 
that'll work for what I am trying to do in this. I want a nice rigid chassis. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, I'll probably change a couple little things up here and there. Add maybe add a bar or subtract a bar. But that's basically what I'm doing. If you are looking to maybe do a tube chassis or a cage, you can find all those certifications online. And just go online, you can find um, the drag certifications or if you're doing like a drift car, I think Formula D has their own certifications. And so you can kind of take those and even if you're not gonna run in one of those classes, you can kind of take that and modify it to fit your needs and then you, know, you can get it close. You know, it'll kind of tell you what to put where and, and how to tie it in and that sort of thing. I also had a lot of people wanting me to kind of talk about how I notched these bars to fit together. And really it's not that hard. If you think about it, uh, the notcher itself is just like one of the tubes. It's kind of notching a hole where the tube would go. And so as long as you know the angles of which those two bars are going to meet, you can basically, basically make those notches exactly fit like you want them to. Up front, this lower bar has two bends in it. Um, I actually got those angles, you know, when it was out of the car, raised it up, put the angle finder on it. I knew that the, the bender said that they were like 31 degrees. I checked to make sure that they were that was correct. And then once it was in the car, when I needed to cut the notches in the sidebars that ran down the side, I knew just to cut it at that angle. So put it in the notcher, put the degree finder on it, set it up 31 degrees, notched it, and of course they fit perfect once I got them in the car. Once I had the sidebars in, then it was time for the back bar. That kind of just pulled up the rear, tied those into the plates as well, and that's the start of the floor pan. A lot of people asked how I was going to get this thing perfectly true. You know, I have a chassis table in here. How are you gonna get it perfectly true, you know? Well, this is the thing. So, really, I mean, you want your chassis to be nice and level and true, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. As long as all your corner weights are the same and all the geometry on your suspension is in the right place, the car will drive and handle perfectly regardless of what the bars look like on the inside. Right, this the chassis and the wheels and the tires don't know what bars are where and if they're level or not. As long as the mounting points for all the suspension are correct and level and true, and all the corner weights are the same, within reason, the car should drive and perform pretty good. But that being said, basically what I do is I just make sure that every bar is level. So if I start with the uh, front bar up here, I basically, once I put it in there, before I tack it in, I just put a, uh, let's put a level on it, put a protractor on it, make sure that thing is zero degrees. Well, guess what? I make sure the back bar is the exact same way, and then I make sure the sidebars are the same way. The sidebars are perfectly level, and they're attached to the front bar, which is perfectly level. Then really, the back bar has to be perfectly level because the sidebars can't go up or down, right? Or they can't be wonky on them because then the, the angles won't measure out properly. So basically I just put a level on everything, make sure everything is perfectly level. And uh, that's kind of how you, you would start. That's how you get something as true as you possibly can without having like a, a chassis table or that sort of thing. Once the floor was done, then it was time for the main hoop behind the driver and passenger. Uh, this was a little bit more tricky. I'd actually looked at buying some of the Bentec software to kind of lay this stuff out. Um, never did get it and figured I would just wing it. So the way I did that was I just made, I just made this little test bend and as it was in the bender, I kind of marked the degrees as it bent. And then what I did was I'd get in the car, kind of measure from center over and then I knew where I wanted the bend to start. And so I knew that that was at zero and I could kind of mark that on the car let that thing bend around. I could see how far I wanted it to go in order to kind of track the side of the car. It was like 65 degrees. So I knew that the first bend had to be 65 degrees and it had to be, you know, eight inches off center. Once I got 65 degrees, I put a little mark on the side of the car and then I knew that I needed to measure down for the straight leg on that piece to where I felt like the next bend needed to start. And it was like five inches. And so then I just brought this down, kind of looked at this bend and kind of made a bend recipe, I guess the best way to put it. I made a you know, bend recipe. I knew it needed to go, you know, eight inches off center, 65 degrees, five inches, 
25 degree bend and so on and so forth. So then when I put that thing in the bender and actually marked the first one, made a bend, marked it, measured off, you know, eight degrees, five, I mean, uh, eight inches, five inches, whatever it was. In the end, I got exactly what I needed for that main hoop. And then all I did was just flip it around and started back from center and did the exact same thing on the other side. One of the tricky parts when trying to do these kind of, you know, halo sections or, or really any anything that has multiple bends on it is you want that thing to be bent on the the same uh, axis, I guess. You know, you don't want you don't want that thing to kind of, you know, end up all crooked or wonky. And the way that I do that is I'll use. I'll use these two things right here. Basically, both of them are just digital protractors. This one is actually in a billet housing. And that way you can slide it over the tube itself, crank it down. And before you make your fit first bend, you zero this thing out, right? And then you know that that tube is gonna be, you know, if it moves, if it clocks itself any differently, then it's gonna read right here. And so you just keep that at zero throughout those bends. If you have to pull it out, flip it over, do whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as you don't loosen this thing up, when you stick it back in there, you know that you can clock that tube the exact way that it needs to be. I also level up the bender with a digital protractor like this, and then as the bends start coming out, I'll put this on the bar and just make sure that that bar is also level. It's not hard, but if you don't kind of check up on it, it can get out of hand pretty quick, and then you'll have some kind of twisted up, wonky looking thing.
Once I got that back hoop made and, and kind of bent and fit the exact way that I wanted, it took a while. You know, I had to kind of play with it, put it in the car, check some things, pull it out of the car, you know, put it back in the bender, back in the car. I mean, I was back and forth probably six, seven, eight times to get it exactly like I wanted it to. But once I did, made some marks, took that thing over to the notcher, notched it, uh, got it all notched up, and then back in the car, man, that thing fits perfect. Even, even where the three bars intersect at the bottom, and I had to notch for all three bars, didn't matter, the thing is tight. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. I know it's not really like an instructional video on how to build these cages. I don't, you know, I don't really like to do instructional stuff, but I hope that I kind of talked about it enough where you have some understanding or you can wrap your head around it in a way that would get the job done for you guys. Uh, stay tuned, a lot, of, lot more bars are gonna go into this thing, a lot more chassis stuff. I mean, I got X bars and the, the front, you know, the main halo and the front pillar bars, um, the full, the whole front suspension, motor mounts, all that stuff is going to be done tubular. The entire rear section, as far as suspension goes, is going to be tubular. So a lot more tubes are going to be cut and bent. Stay tuned. You'll see, you'll see some more stuff if you didn't get what you needed in this video. But uh, it's looking promising, fellas. I'm liking it. I'm ready for this thing to be together. At least like a roller. That would be cool. You know, just full roller, kind of roll it around do my thing. I mean, we are getting out of the shop, so we're gonna have to move it. We're gonna get this thing rolling. So stay tuned, more videos coming next week on this. Gonna be back on the goose just for a little bit. Gonna make some mufflers for this thing. Probably have that video up next week. I am leaving for SEMA today, flying out this evening. So I'll be there, gonna try to maybe do daily videos out there. Gonna take the computer, maybe do edits and uploads. So stay tuned for that. I will also, be snapchatting and probably do some Instagram stuff. So go follow me there if you want to see who I'm with and what I'm doing at SEMA. I think Snapchat's going to be the easiest. going to take the spectacles and just sometimes it's a little bit easier just to snap everything. All right, guys, that's it for this video. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this weekend at SEMA. And then next weekend, back in the shop. Go do work. Son.